Good afternoon. Um, this is um, an event that we have put together today, um, sponsored by the Latin America Northeast Libraries Network, or LANE for short. And today's event is titled La Presencia Dominicana en el Periódico Las Novedades, a conversation with Professor Sara Aponte. Um, I am co-chair of LANE, and I am now going to pass it to my Lane co-chair, uh, Allison Williams. Thanks, Nelson. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Lane, um, or as Nelson said, the Latin America Northeast Libraries Network. Um, and Lane is a network of library professionals representing academic and research libraries based mainly in the northeastern United States, along with uh, the UK, Spain, and Germany. Its members are committed to supporting research, teaching, and learning in Latin American, Caribbean, Iberian, and Latinx studies. LANE is a regional affinity group of the Seminar on the Acqu Acquisition of Latin American Library Materials, or SALAM, and LANE was founded in 1993. Um, as Nelson mentioned, um, this uh, presentation is being recorded and will be posted to LANE's YouTube channel. Uh, so thank you all for being here, and I will pass it back to Nelson. Thank you so much. And for those who are unfamiliar, I mean, Lane works on so many different projects like the uh, Lackley project, et cetera. Um, first, I want to thank uh, definitely everyone that is here. Thank you to the members of Lane uh, and Salam, the Seminar on the Acquisition of Latin American Library Materials, and everyone else who is here. So we hope you get to learn a little bit about Lane and the work that we do. Um, and now let's get to our main event. Um, Professor Sara Aponte is the Chief Librarian of the CUNY Dominican Studies Institute and Professor at the City College of New York Libraries. She founded the Dominican Library in 1994 with donations of books by the Council of Dominican Educators, and she is the first Dominican librarian solely dedicated to Dominican studies in the United States. She assists scholars and students undertaking research on Dominican issues and conducts educational workshops using archival and library resources. Professor Aponte is the author of several peer-reviewed articles, encyclopedia entries, and books, including Autores Dominicanos de la Diaspora, Apuntes Biobibliográficos, 1902 to, 19, to 2012, published by La Biblioteca Nacional, Pedro Enriquez Ureña, and winner of the Jose Toribio, Toribio Medina Award. Um, she's also the author of the book that she will be uh, discussing today, La Presencia Dominicana en el Periódico Las Novedades, 1876 to 1918, De Breve Mención a Propietarios en la Ciudad de Nueva York, published by La Biblioteca Nacional, Pedro Enrique Sureña, and the CUNY Dominican Studies Institute. This title also uh, is the recipient of the Jose Toribio Medina Award due to the interventions that it is making uh, in the field. Professor Aponte has won numerous awards, has delivered keynote addresses, and her books have also received numerous awards as well. Um, she holds an MLS in Library and Information Sciences from Queens College, an MSED in Higher Education Administration from Baruch College, a BA in International Studies from the City College of New York, and an AA in Liberal Arts from Ostos Community College. Today's uh, conversation will be a conversation, um, and it is just, uh, as someone who is her mentee, uh, admires her so much, it is an honor to present La Profesora Sara Aponte. Gracias, Nelson. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Lane Co-Chairs, Alison Williams, and Professor Nelson Santana for organizing this conversation, and uh, to all of you who are attending today. Muchas gracias. I know how busy our schedule are, so thank you for that. So allow me to uh, please, sorry about that. Allow me to dedicate this conversation to my beautiful nephew uh, who passed away after a, very, a battle with cancer, shy from his 22nd birthday. After his first surgery, I dedicated a um, part of the book to him. And I'm honored that he was able uh, to see that and to um, be happy with the book. So in loving memory to my beautiful Gabriel, 
Alexander Remus. So the book that we're going to have a conversation today is uh, Las Novedades, as Nelson uh, said, and it was published in 2022. It includes historical overview of Las Novedades and its importance within the Hispanic 19th and 20th century communities. And I say Hispanic because that was the term that was used during that time. Uh, nowadays, we call it Latine, Latino, Latina, like many different names, but this is what they used during that time. And it has 725 transcriptions. It has a list of newspapers mentioned in Las Novedades and that mention it. It has an extensive bibliography. And of course, I am so grateful that Salam was, um, gave um, this book, the Jose Toribia Medina Award. Uh, it's a great honor. As the conversation is going on, we will be sharing actually um, some of the book reviews that have been written, so that it, so people can actually download as um, and read them when when you know after the conversation, of course, um, if they have not done so already, because I think it's a it's it's an important an important um, just work intervention that you're doing. Um, and unfortunately, because I got to see part of that process, right? Just seeing you being excited. I, I'm sounding so much like a fan, so let me just stop there. Uh, aquí viene la primera pregunta. Um, what inspired you to undertake this extensive archival research project focusing on Las Novedades? What made this newspaper slash magazine particularly fascinating to you? Thank you for the question, Nelson. And I have some... Um is texts that uh, were so important for understanding and learning about Las Novedades. And these foundational texts mentioned Dominicans as owners of Las Novedades from 1914 to 1918. And when I read that, um, I was like very curious. And I immediately began looking into this information. And this, this was in the late 1990s, by the way. Uh, so a long time ago. So the these people, I, I need to mention them because they are um, Dominican scholars who have earned my respect. Uh, for example, Dr. Coco de Filippis, uh, who wrote a couple of books related to early Dominican presence in the United States, together with uh, also uh, Professor Franklin Gutierrez. And of course, my mentor, uh, El Professor Silvio Torres Allende, um, who wrote a couple of articles as well. And in his book, in the book, Dominican Americans, written with Dr. Ramon Hernandez, he mentions Las Novedades. And then, of course, a libro, um, the book by Rodriguez de Leon, a, a querido profesor Paco, uh, that he wrote a book about the early presence of Dominicans in New York, in the United States, and he mentions Las Novedades as well. So with, with these books, I went into very much detail, uh, looking into more what they said about Dominican early presence and then Las Novedades as well. And this is what I found. Um, I found that um, Las Novedades, España y los Pueblos Hispanoamericanos, was a, founded by two uh, Spaniards, uh, journalists. Their names were Jose G. Garcia y Enrique Muñiz. The thing is that when you um, read about Las Novedades, you just read that Jose Garcia was a founding uh, person, and that's it. Not many people mention Enrique Muñiz, but it was important that um, we mentioned that in the book. And, and then I discovered that it became one of the most important publications of the Spanish-speaking uh, language uh, in New York with distribution in Latin America, the Caribbean, and Europe. And these are 21 countries where Las Novedades was distributed. And as you see, um, um, Argentina, Brazil, and then, of course, Chile, and Mexico, Nicaragua, et cetera, uh, including Santo Domingo as well, of the Dominican Republic, as we, we call it now. Wow. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I, I want to say that um, please feel free to write any questions that you may have here in the chat. Um, and also, uh, at the end, we'll have the Q&A with the audience, but feel free to send them. Uh, my colleague, Allison and I, we're, we're jotting them down. Um, and yes, and also we will allow people to even ask the questions um, at the end of this uh, initial Q&A. Um, here's a second question for you. 
Can you discuss the challenges you faced in locating and accessing the various archives, microfilms, and databases containing Las Novedades materials? Absolutely. Um, as I said, I began looking for Las Novedades a long time ago. So I needed to look into different databases, different catalogs, and also uh, looking into microfilms. The New York Public Library has a set of microfilms by Las Novedades, with Las Novedades uh, issues. Uh, many of them are missing, but during those years, um, the early 20s, 20,000, 2000, I'm sorry, the early 2000s, uh, we were able to purchase these microfilms. And then uh, Professor Santana was not a professor yet, he was working with us, and he helped us in uh, putting together a team to digitize these um, microfilms and then for, for me to have access to this. So thank you, Nelson, that very early on you were helping us with this project. And then I went to the uh, Rebex, which is a very expensive database. CUNY does not have it, but it's a great database. And it's, um, I know that uh, Professor Nicolás Canelos has been part of this and uh, we're grateful for his amazing work in organizing all this information. So they have a very large amount of Las Novedades issues in there. And then also I, I looked into the Chronicling American Historic American Newspapers, which is part of the um, Library of Congress. And Immigrant Newspapers, Historical New York City Publications, La Biblioteca Virtual, El Patrimonio Bibliográfico del Ministerio de Cultura y Deportes, Spain. And of course, the microfilms uh, by, um, this, by SUNY. SUNY at the State University of New York at Albany, have a, ha, they have a great amount of microfilms. And I'm so grateful to um, Jesus Alonso Regalado, one of our Salon members and lay members, who during the pandemic gave me access to these and said, make sure that we um, I could get access to these microfilms. So thank you for that. And also in the Library of Congress, um, I have to thank uh, Susan, Susan Shadow, because during the pandemic also, she was an instrumental. Uh, we were coming out of the pandemic when um, she gave me permission to go and visit Library of Congress and look at the um, printed copies. So um, you see, this is a, a work that uh, many people has helped and I am so grateful. But yes, look into the work at, of course, and making a list of who had the Las Novedades uh, printed copies, who had them um, on microfilm, et cetera. And then, of course, the Meroteca Municipal de Madrid. Then um, this is the Library of Congress. It's the only institution that has three issues from 1876 of Las Novedades, the year the, the newspaper was founded. And these are printed issues. And because of the uh, system of Susan Shadow, I was able to get into the Library of Congress and I was able to touch them. I was able to look into these materials uh, very carefully, by the way. And this is an image that I took during my visit of these printed copies. Then the Hispanic Society of America, which is very nearby City College, they have uh, some printed issues, many of them in color from 1916 to 1917. So when I saw the, the first one in color, I was like amazed because it looks so beautiful and so well taken, taken care of. And then of course, Roger, Rockers University, the library has issues from 1908 to 1915, making it the most complete collection of printed issues of Las Novedades. And mind you, I was doing this, I was finishing the book uh, during the pandemic. So I didn't have access to these, they didn't allow people from the outside to go into the library. So I was with a um, PSC CUNY grant from CUNY. I was able to hire a, um, a, a person that worked in the library and she was instrumental in getting me all these documentations and I was able to do it um, at a distance. So I just wanted to mention that because I think it's important. And then um, I think, yes, and this is uh, what I found looking into the materials, uh, the Spanish press in the U.S., um, uh, the, a brief chronology. Uh, and this is, by the way, you look into this information by Nicolás Canelos and Martel. I have their uh, information in the back uh, at the end of the presentation. But briefly, in 1808, um, 
el Mississippi. <laughs> it, uses, it has an accent at the end. So it's the first Spanish uh, newspaper published in New Orleans. And then in New York City, we have El Mercurio de Nueva York, and then El Mercurio Semanal de Nueva York, La Crónica, El Cronista, that they get together, and then it becomes Las Novedades. Thank you for bringing attention to the different types of, just the, the difficulty and the different types of archives uh, that you had to 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 visit uh, to, to ensure publication of your book, and that this was a years, years, several years long project. Uh, the next question is, um, when Las Novedades transitioned from Spanish to Dominican ownership, what interesting changes did you observe in its content and uh, direction? Yes. So, all of these colors that I mentioned before uh, said that Dominicans became the owners of Las Novedades in 1914. And if you see this um, cover of Las Novedades, you see there uh, FJ Peinado and J. B. Vicini, uh, proprietors. And those are Dominican. One is a Dominican, uh, was a Dominican lawyer, and the other one was a Dominican businessman. Uh, but when I was looking into all these, and, and I thought that, oh, the Dominican years, 1914 to 1918, that was my first uh, interest. But then looking, digging into all these um, issues that I had access to, I found that in circa 1909, uh, Dominicans became the owner. And I'm saying circa because uh, this is the name of the two of the Galvan brothers that became the owners of Las Novedades. As here, they said that they were director, administrators, and advisor, uh, editor-in-chief. But I found another information about that they mentioned Galvan, uh, the Galvan brothers, uh, in an issue in 1907. But I didn't find any um, information like this. For example, I didn't find that they say that it's the director, this is the author, no. But within the, um, the newspaper, I found um, that one Dominican um, scholar came to the U.S. and gave a copy of a book to a Galvan, one of the Galvan brothers, and they're saying that in within the, the newspaper, Las Novedades. So it, it means that they were involved with Las Novedades. Perhaps they were not the owners, but they were very much involved. But this is what I found um, of evidence, right? And then in this special issue dedicated to the centenary of the independence of Mexico in 1910, then officially it, their names appear for the first time. Um, in uh, the newspaper. So you see, we have Jose uh, Garcia. They always put his name as the founder. And you see, they don't put Muniz. And that's the part that I, I like people to understand that th this was founded by two Dominican Span uh, Spanish um, journalists. Uh, but then they have Luis Galvan, Rafael O. Galvan, Emmanuel de, Je de Jesus Galvan, Jr. Because the dad, Manuel de Jesus Galvan, was the a author of Enriquillo, a very well-known uh, Dominican novel um, about the Taino population in what is today the Dominican Republic and Haiti. So you see, they mentioned Dominican Galvan brothers as owners, administrators, and editors. And this is a the first copy that I saw in color. So I was very excited about that when I saw that. So the next one, um, what are the changes? that that I um I saw I saw many changes but when uh, Francisco uh, Peinado and Vicini Burgos became owners no the transition between the Spaniard um uh, journalists uh to the Galvan brothers so when the Vicini Burgos and Francisco Peinado became owners uh, we saw a lot of changes and they were given free copies of Las Novedades to recent, recently arrived immigrants from Spain and Latin America. They, they included um, services uh, for uh, translations from Spanish to French to, to English and vice versa, including legal papers. They began putting together a uh, page um, dedicated to the women, right? To women, to Las Modas Femeninas, uh, fashion, as, as well as different topics within uh, the home. 
Uh, they also began including a international exchange uh, list, um, also a brief news about diversity in, in international topics, and etc. So you see, they have a lot going on while they became the owners. They also created a tourism department, organizing tours uh, to Spain and the US. Um, they have figures of America, including images of Simón Bolívar, José Martí, Federico Enrique y Carvajal, Máximo Gómez, Hostos, among others. They added sections of biographies, great artists, movies, and also a list of countries where Las Novedades was distributed. The ad that I showed you at the beginning uh, began when, when they became owners. Wow, thank you. Um, there's just so, so much information that you're sharing with us. Uh, your book reveals that Las Novedades operated its own bookstore. Could you elaborate on its role in promoting Dominican and Latin American literature? Just as important, what role did this bookstore play in promoting Latin American literature as a whole? Yes, they uh, were the, well, Las Novedades became a printing uh, company as well, but it was mainly during the ownership of the Domin Dominicans. And if you see the dates that these books were published, they're 1915, 1916, while well, they were the owners. Uh, so these are some of the books, El Canto del Cisne by Manuel F. Cestero, who became um, uh, an editor in Las Novedades, a very well-known Dominican uh, writer in the, 19th, uh, the 20th century, early 20th century. Then we have El Nacimiento de Dionisos uh, by Pedro Enrique uh, Ureña, uh, who after that became so famous. <laughs> and everybody you know, knows about him um, in, throughout Latin America. He was a, an editor for a couple of years in Las Novedades. He wrote for Las Novedades. During his ed edit, ed when, while he was the editor and also afterwards, he continued contributing to Las Novedades. Um, the same as his dad, um, Pedro Enrique C. Carvajal. So um, also we have Colombia and her commercial opportunities by Francisco Escobar y Salvador Iglesias. And then La Cuestión Religiosa en México by Luis Cabrera. It was originally in Spanish and they translated it into English as well. And Los Débiles by Jesús Alfao, who happened to be family, uh, a family member of the um, Galvan, um, you know, uh, crew. Uh, she was married to one of uh, his family members. And in here we have uh, all these. And then uh, they also sold many books, not only the ones that they published, but also it was a bookstore. People came to Las Novedades uh, headquarters and buy, um, bought books. For example, the uh, here the address is 225 West, 39th Street. People used to go there, um, bought books, interacted with the owners of Las Novedades, with the editors, etc. It became like a community place, an intellectual hub for many visitors uh, throughout the those years, um, not only from the Dominican Republic, but from all over Latin America and the Caribbean. What discoveries about the Dominican intellectual community in New York from 1876 to 1918 uh, most intrigued you? A lot, a lot of them, but I just, you know, show some, so to show you. So um, in here, you see that the Dominican intellectual uh, life was very active uh, in New York City. Even though it has been um, discussed very little, little or it should, it should be, it has been discussed very little here, okay? <laughs> it doesn't say that, but it's supposed to say that. Um, I found a lot of news about um, parties, lectures, events, fundraising uh, for the um, Latin American community in, in New York City. This, the first one that I'm showing you is the founding of the Dominican Consulate in New York. And he says that they, uh, he says that it was in 1889. It was before Dominicans were the owners of Las Novedades, which is important to mention because um, 
the, the Dominicans were part of Las Novedades, even, even though they were not the owners for a time. They mentioned them a lot. Then we have a reception uh, by a minister from Santo Domingo, which is Manuel de Jesus Calvan, which is the father of the editor of Las Novedades and the one who wrote uh, El Riquillo. And Ia is, is giving him the welcoming to um, the United States, especially to Washington. And then we have, let's see if I can go to the next slide. We have then, um, they talk about Peinado as uh, welcoming him. That was before he became the owner of Las Novedades. So you see, they were friends. They mingled. They talk among themselves. They, they were part of this intellectual hub among Dominicans. And then again about El Consulado Dominicano. And I, I like this uh, to, to show you this because it's in 1913, again before. and. The, uh, Galvan and uh, Peinado came in, and also Vicini. But the Galvan brothers were part of, of the were the owners. And then you see all these names of Dominicans and non Latin American, and also people from the U.S. Mean, interacting, um, having a, an event like an event together, having fun, talking about different political topics, but at the same time getting together in um, New York City. So I just wanted to showcase all these little, you know, acts, because for me, they were important. Fantastic. Hearing you talk about Los Hermanos Galvan, I wonder if Manolo Galvan, the famed singer, is related to them, to their family. <laughs> you know, but a, good, a good research topic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, on a more serious matter. Uh, in your research, how did you find Las Novedades approach the complex relationship? between the Dominican Republic and Haiti? Wow, so complex. Um, they, I ded they dedicated um, a lot of um, articles about the relationship between the Dominican Republic and Haiti. They called it many times the conflict between the two countries. And I, in the book, I um, put together a whole section dedicated to uh, Haitian-Dominican relations and trying uh, just to be uh, off front and then putting all of the information in there. But what I, I just want to, to mention is that they um, they emphasized the U.S. imperial influence in the relationship between the two republics. It, it was like, if you see it from the outside as a scholar, as a researcher, and then you say, oh, they want these two countries to fight. <laughs> they want them to be enemies, you know, because that was uh, the mentality. Sometimes they said, oh, a very um, positive things about Haiti and minimizing Dominicans, or they did the country. They talked very highly about Dominicans minimizing Haitians. So you could see that a lot. And and for that, I, I recommend you and, and suggest you to look into uh, Professor Candelario, Gimeta Candelario's book, um, Black Behind the Years, because her first chapter, she talks about this, about the travelers' accounts of many uh, people going to the Dominican Republic and Haiti and, and you know, uh, emphasizing the, the difference between the two countries. And then uh, it also includes articles um, under the Spanish ownership, especially in 1989 or 1905, as well as uh, the U.S. covering the U.S. intervention to Haiti in 1915, one year prior to the DR intervention in 1916. So they, it's a whole section. I, I entice you to look into it because you are going to find so much to write about and to understand um, the relationship between Dominicans and Haitians and how much the outside, and this is before Trujillo, by the way. So it's important for you to look into this because people think that it happened after Trujillo the dictator was uh, in power. No, this was be way before uh, he was in power. So it's important for scholars to look into this. And then here I put some of these uh, articles, um, you know, Dominican Republic and Haitians, and then or Haiti um, writing uh, like in a communication with the U.S. being upset about um, what is going to happen if you've assigned an 
a convenio, like an agreement with the R, a Santo Domingo, what is the consequences for Haiti? And then um, the, uh, the U.S. saying, no, it's not happening. And then how much Haiti was okay with that. So a lot of things happening. And I entice you to look into these, um, this section. Thank you so much for providing this uh, response um, and, and indicating that, uh, you know, these discussions have been had before and that there are people who can see behind the scenes because you have scholars today who sort of have one perspective. They perhaps demonize Dominicans or demonize a group. Um, and yet we have these people uh, in the late uh, 19th century, early 20th century, who actually were providing this other perspective. So thank you for the nuances and bringing this up because, again, uh, many scholars, there are scholars today who sort of bypass it and just, you know, provide. Uh, so thank you. Um, could you describe, and sort of just shifting a little bit here, uh, could you describe the contributions of, of women writers to Las Novedades, particularly between 1910 and 1918? Yes. Um, okay, so in in from those years, as of that, it's provided a space for twenty Spanish speaking and Anglo Saxon uh, women writers. That's not a lot when you ac account for all the space that they gave to men, but at least they they have a space for women. They publish poems, translations, articles, and biographical sketches. And in here, I put. Um, for example, one that uh, by uh, Ruben Darío that I'm going to discuss later on, and, and it's translated into, into English, and then it was translated by Alice Stone Blackwell. And the other one, which is a, a poem by Jose Santos Chocano, also published, um, translated by Alice Stone Blackwell. And in here, you have La Página del Hogar. It has a lot of... Like la moda de la, la moda de la época, no? <laughs> the fashion of the time. And, and then it has a, also, besides that, they dedicated uh, pages to do Dominican, uh, not Dominican, but women uh, writers. In here, you can find La Condesa de Pardo Bazan, which is a, a uh, writes a short story, Femeninas. And then Sofia Casanova, a poem, Pleno Día. Elisa Ross de Jaramante, a poem hipno feminista, y Concepción Jimeno de Flaquer, who is a short story La Niña. This is in 1915, page 70. If you're interested, I can send you this, uh, whoever wants to see this more. Because I have, as I said, uh, I looked into all these and I have all of them in a, on a PDF. Let me see, I think the other one, um, yes. And also Jesús Alfao. Jesús Alfaro wrote Los Débiles, and, and they published that in Las Novedades afterwards. And then they also dedicated a whole like section about her and her life. Dr. Coco de Filippis, Daisy Coco de Filippis, um, claims Jesús Alfaro as a Dominican writer. But in, in, in the Las Novedades, you can never, I, I never found that. But I understand why she's doing that. Uh, she was, her granddad was Dominican, and then she was trying to claim that Dominicanness into her. But um, uh, besides her, I, the other writers, I didn't find um, them as being Dominicans. Thank you. So we could go The book mentions that Las Novedades published works by notable authors like Ruben Darío, and Pedro Enrique Sureña. How did the newspaper position itself within the broader Latin American literary scene? Yes. Um, Ruben Darío. That's why I dedicated so much time to Ruben Darío. When he came to the U.S. and he stayed here for a couple of months, he went to different events, etc. And this, uh, La Queja del Establo, was dedicated to Peinado by the way, and it was in 1915 in January. Uh, Ruben Darío, as you know, is a very well-known Nicaraguan um, writer. And then also Pedro Enrique Sureña, they published a lot of his writing, not when he was the editor only, but whenever he sent any writing to Las Novedades. Then we have writing about by Leopoldo Alas Clarín from Spain, 
um, in one, once he says that he wrote exclusively to Las Novedades when he wrote in U.S. newspapers. Then we have Salomón de la Selva from Nicaragua and then Jose Santos Chocano from Peru. And you see in Norte Chocano, they had a whole you know, event um, attending a lot of uh, Latin American writers and, and the like uh, to that. And then in here, you're going to see Ruben Darío, very well, they wrote about Ruben Darío all the time. But in there, you can also see how Pedro Enrique Studeña writes about him. They were no friends. Um, the way he writes, it's like, oh, all this fuss with this, uh, such, not, not, such not a good writer. So you, like people who write literature can look into this and then can write articles, books about that. But it was fascinating. Uh, to see that, but they never met. According to Las Novedades, they never met. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Um, <laughs> what insights does Las Novedades provide about Dominican migration patterns to New York during this period? A lot of uh, welcome and farewell notes, as well as event, meeting, recounts, uh, Dominicans coming and going through Ellis Island. Right. These are some ads in one page only about uh, people from the Dominican Republic arriving in the United States. And, and also um, in here they have reception. So all uh, happening all the time. But I wanted to showcase this. Las Novedades Dominicans who arrived through Ellis Island. More than 5,000 Dominicans arrived between 1892 and 1924. And this is uh, being studied by Dr. Ramona Hernandez. She is the director of the Institute and she is putting together a book about this. But in Las Novedades, you can see this. The majority were established in New York City. According to Las Novedades, they met in churches, cultural societies, and through newspaper and printing presses. They interacted with all the Latin American groups despite Despite this frequent news published in Las Novedades about the growing Dominican community, there is no much written about it. And that's why I wanted to make sure people have this book so they have this information available. So in here you have these two uh, lists. You have a list of um, uh, passengers yeah, that arrived into different hotels. And then in here you have a list of where Las Novedades is, um, they, they sell Las Novedades in New York City. I think that's the, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, as you are aware, through the media platform that I co-founded, Ascendon, I have delved into journalism and find it fascinating when an outsider, right, provides their perspective into matters uh, in a realm where they may not be fully welcome. Could you discuss the significance of the newspaper's coverage of World War I? I believe the section is Noticias de la Guerra Europea, okay. but from a Dominican perspective. Yes, yes, yes. Um, they continued between 1909 and 1918, when Dominicans were the owners, um, they published international and national news, continuing its section Noticias de la Guerra Europea, divided by countries that then became uh, a World War uh, One, And they were very, um, they, they were very critical. They were very critical into this, and not only to like related to World War I, but also the US intervention in the Dominican Republic and Haiti. These people lived in New York. These people mingled here and they were very upset about this intervention. And they were talking, they were very um, vocal into criticizing the US. So for, I find that fascinating. Uh, so I entice you to look into um, these different uh, news within the Las Novedades. Thank you. I mean, there's so much that um, even though I've read your book, your monograph, I mean, you know, looked at it uh, more than once, um, and I'm still learning new details, right? So it's just so fascinating and how you make these uh, documents just accessible to the public. So thank you for that. Um, how did the newspaper address issues of race and immigration policy during this uh, period? Race, um, it was really referring to hermanos de raza ibérica, la raza latinoamericana, nuestros hermanos de raza, 
they didn't mention black or white, or it was ma mainly Latin Americans and uh, people from Hispanic American and people from I the Iberia, Iberian continent. So uh, you're going to see that a lot within Las Novedades. And then, um, hold on, please. Oops, sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. I went to the other one. Sorry about that. <laughs> now, so this is the way um, they refer to La Raza. And I have a small section in the book. But um, if you bring this into current discussions, you, you feel like it was a void in the newspaper. Um, that they didn't get into into that. They didn't even talk about, um, you know, relationship between African Americans and Dominicans. And no, it was mainly Latin Americanists and people from Europe, from Spain, and and the like. But that is not touched within Las Novedades. Thank you. And uh, one more question. And then we will get to the audience audience questions that are coming in. Please keep uh, keep sending them our way. What do you hope future researchers will discover using your monograph as a starting point? As a librarian, I like to organize information for other scholars, and I want this book to be that. To be, for example, I want you to uh, look more into El Suprajo Femenino, for example, they were discussing when women began voting. E e e is very much detailed within throughout Las Novedades. Uh, so, for example, another one is they talked about a grants or fellowships for Latin American senoritas or like women, uh, young women. So I would like people to look into that as well. <laughs> the, I put this um, caricatura, which they, they're introducing mini faldas. And this was the first time that it happened um, in the U.S. So... That's fascinating for an, a person that is studying fashion or art or not necessarily a historian uh, or a literature person, but it's, this book is meant for many different fields to continue exploring into that. Uh, also, uh, the being a bookstore, how, and then the price that people were paying, uh, people who are studying uh, uh, economics during those years can look into Las Novedades. It's a lot of ads, and they... They mention a lot of uh, prices and et cetera. And then I want also people to learn more about our Dominican presence in the U.S. Beyond New York City, if you see this ad, it's about La Dominicana, which was a company uh, created in Kansas and of rich and serious people with interest uh, of sending immigrants to the Dominican Republic. This company um, is creating in Kansas is giving us uh, to understand that the Dominican population already existed in other places in the United States during that early time. So the book is for that. It's like um, a gift uh, for so many scholars to continue exploring. What I did is I, trans I of course, put a, a brief introduction, but I transcribed all of these in newspaper ads, uh, articles that mention Dominicans, but also people that are studying Mexico and Peru and many of Brazil, any different country uh, that belongs to Latin America during those years, you're going to find information in Las Novedades. You can do the same for other groups. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and I think this is a selective bibliography before we finish up, Jens A. Nelson. And a selective bibliography of um, excellent writing that helped me a lot. Uh, Canelo's book, Nicolas Canelo, is a, with Helvetia Martel, was a plus for this, and a, a couple of a PhD dissertation and a couple of articles. So I just wanted to, for you to take a look at that. And then, gracias. Thank you so much, Professor Ponte. Um, do you give uh, scholars? permission to sort of model um, the way that you publish this monograph? Because I, I think that it's a unique way, right? Where you actually analyze certain themes in your book, but then you also provide um, 
images, right? You you provide the actual articles for people to look at them. Um, do you see it as a possibility? Are you willing to mentor or um, allow people to sort of learn from you and how to do that type of research? Claro que sí. Oh, I will love that. <laughs> this is the process, yeah. Well, well, thank you so much because uh, for those who may not be aware at the CUNY Dominican Studies Institute, the Dominican Archives has a lot of amazing papers. Um, and so that needs, and we need more researchers there. Um, so thank you so much for this uh, Q, Q and a, for uh, this presentation that you have done uh, of your book, which has been reviewed. Uh, we shared uh, two of the reviews that have come out through the, this. We can also email us to people directly. And I will now pass it over to Lane Culture, Ms. Allison Williams. Thank you, Nelson. And gracias, Sara. That was that was really, really great. Definitely um, really uh, a lot of amazing resources that have been highlighted. Um, there have been a few questions that have come in in the chat. Um, so I will go ahead and read those. Um, uh, so starting from uh, the first question that came in, you move them over so I can actually see them. Um, from um, Jesus Sanabria is, um, was it a, a perio un periódico or a magazine? How often was it published? What were the concerns of this magazine? What kind of concerns or successes um, they share about the community at the time? Hi, thank you so much, uh, Professor Sanabria. Um, <clears throat> this was both a magazine and a newspaper. And I have a section in the book that discusses that. Uh, but I decided to call it a newspaper, uh, un periódico, because this is what I found the most throughout Las Novedades. And it was published um, weekly, and then it was published twice a week. It depended on the years, but it was mainly weekly that it was published. Concerns uh, or successes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the concern is what I just mentioned, you know, the relationship not only between um, Latin American, but also other groups within the communities that were living in the U.S. during that time. And successes, I think, the establishing of a important community um, that not only dealt with Dominicans, but Latin Americans in those years. And people don't think about that. They, well, they just came after the, you know, the 60s or the 50s. But wow, what a vivid, um, lively community there was in those years. Yeah. Thank you. So the next question is from um, Sharina um, Mayoposo. Uh, Doctora Oponte, have you come across any possible reasons for the omission of the second owner? <laughs> um, not much, not much information. Um, I also have that in the book, a, a discussion a little bit about him. Um, they, um, I guess that when they part ways, they were not much friends anymore. So that's why you don't see his name a lot. A lot of gossip, <laughs> like journalism, uh, journalism gossip during those uh, years. So I, I commend you to look into the book because he has a whole section about that. These mm -hmm. uh, men, Radio Pasio, really do make the world go round. So appreciated <laughs> that that has made it in as well. And the next question is from um, Eric Silverberg. Um, what did the editor publishers call the Dominican population or pan Latin American community in the city in the old days sometimes referred to as Spanish what did you find no they mainly called them Dominican that's what I found um in with throughout Las Novedades even when the owners were not Dominicans um, Santo Domingo of course they called it um but Spaniards no no Spanish. Great, thank you. Um, so another question from um, Jesus Sanabria. Um, do they mention primary occupations? Primary? Hmm. A lot of intellectuals, as I say, a lot of writers, uh, lawyers, lots of lawyers. 
and business people, they owned businesses, um, bookstore, printing company. Hmm. But, but no, they don't mention like a specific besides those um, occupations. But that's a great topic to investigate more. <laughs> I was just having a conversation that um, the best sort of presentations or research uh, are the ones that generate more questions and more research topics to dig into. So um, obviously, Sada, your work has has um, ha is doing that. Um, those were all of the questions in the chat. I think we still have a couple of minutes. If anyone has any final questions, you are also welcome um, to uh, either unmute or come on camera if you have any final questions. Oh, cuánta gente linda. <laughs> so grateful. Well, hearing none, um, I will say um, gracias, Sara, otra vez. And thank you so much. It was really great. And um, I will turn it back over to Nelson. Thanks so much, Alison. Um, Igualmente, muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to be here, for sharing your perspective, this lifelong project, which I know is, uh, is, is, like, it was, is a child to you. Um, um, we just learned so much, and I, I hope that um, it's an interesting type of research that um, I, um, has inspired me to work on a particular project. So thank you so much. Um, and we look forward to your next, I mean, when is your next book coming out? I mean, my goodness, those are what, three monographs already? So. <laughs> no, 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 ahora le toca otra gente. Now it's, <laughs> now it's time for other people to do this. Um, I, uh, by the way, las novedades, I have all of the PDFs. So you're, if you want to look into them, please just let me know. And I would love to share that with you. Even though copyright issue, we need to talk about it. <laughs> Um, there was a question that this ties in um, on um, where can folks find the book? Where can they get the book? Um, so it sounds like they could email you directly, perhaps. Or no, no, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. You know, since I, as a librarian, I love people to come and use the reference book in the library. But yes, if you want to have it, or if you want to purchase that for your library, Amazon has the book. Um, yeah, and it goes directly to the Dominican Institutes. Um, funding no i don't get any <laughs> but i get a lot of great you know support so thank you for that and thank you for everybody who has brought the books for the libraries this is a very heavy book so i don't i don't uh, tend you to you know carry it around like for light reading <laughs> i will just also say that if you haven't had the chance to read through the chat, a lot of really lovely comments and thank yous for your for your work and for your presentation. So um, before signing off, I would definitely recommend doing that. Gracias. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. De verdad, me, me, mi corazón. <laughs> so thank you everyone for attending and we will be, everyone who registered, we will be emailing you a thank you note and also the link uh, to this presentation once uh, it is posted on the Lane website, which should be, I would say, less than a week. I, we promise that. We guarantee it. Or your money back. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. Have a great rest of your day. Adios. Bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Gracias.